Hello, good day to everyone. My name is John from the University of Northern British Columbia. I am a graduate student and I'm here to present an overview of the research I'm undertaking as part of my thesis program. My topic is on land graphs and livelihood outcomes, where I'm looking at um, exploring how farmers in Ghana are responding to the phenomenon of land graphs that are occurring worldwide but also in in Ghana. So it's a project I have just started. Um, I'm hoping to finish uh, next year 2021. So from the little review so far discovered that uh, one of the sticky points when it comes to large scale land acquisitions has to do with the, the figure, the quantum of lands that have been acquired worldwide. And the so far the figures I've seen range from 42.4 million to as high as 200 million. There seems to be no consensus among scholars on as to how much of lands has been acquired worldwide. So if you look at Africa, for instance, we are looking at a figure between 51 to 63 million, and the figure for Ghana is put at a little over a million a million in Ghana. The reason for these different figures by different scholars I've come to discover from literature is as a result of the fact that most of these land transactions that have taken place are, have been done in a very opaque manner. So therefore, um, we are unable to assess the official figures as to the sizes of land that has been acquired by different actors. Also from the list that I've reviewed so far, some of the reasons for the growing demand for land worldwide, including Ghana, has been for food, uh, search for alternative fuel sources, shrinking resource bases of various countries, and trade liberalization. And this land acquisition has been has led to different outcomes or impacts. Uh, while the proponents uh, put forward positives such as employment, increased income, modernized farming methods, increased outputs, are some of the positives for these large scale land acquisitions. There has been negatives as well, including loss of land or access to it, uh, food insecurity, and actual loss of livelihood. And I must say the dominant phenomenon, the dominant impact of uh, research that I've seen so far has to do with the negatives. So this has led, driven, largely driven the recharacterization of large scale land acquisitions as land graphs due to the negative connotation that has come to be associated with the phenomenon of large scale land acquisitions. So the research question that is underpinning this research is how are farmers experiencing and responding to the processes of land graphs? And in order to achieve this broad research objective, specifically we'll be looking at documenting the impact of land graphs on livelihoods in Ghana. And then also examine the coping mechanisms that have been adopted by individual farmers and communities to mitigate the impact of land graphs. And then the third layer we'll be looking at investigating the institutional and then the regulatory framework that either aid or constrain the coping mechanisms adopted in local communities. The conceptual framework for this research uh, is taken from the life, sustainable life rules framework. We will be, I'll be looking at it from the asset-based approach. And I believe this framework gives me a proper base to understand or explore the phenomenon of land graphs and how it impacts livelihoods at the individual level. And at the center of this framework, as you can see in the diagram, is institutions. We highlight, we'll be, I'll be highlighting the role of institutions 
in this research in order to achieve the third objective for this research, which is to look at how institutions either serve as an aiding mechanism or a constraining mechanism of how farmer, farmers are able to cope with the phenomenon of land graphs. For the research design, I'm proposing to take data from three different communities in Ghana. And these communities have been selected to represent three different geographic zones and also to uh, represent three different characterizations of large scale land acquisitions. I'm talking about the geographic zones. Chifu is from the central region of Ghana. Lolito is in the Volta region of Ghana, and Yendi is in the northern region of Ghana, as represented on the on the map on the map in the slide. With regards to the project characterization, according to land matrix project classifications, there are three basic classifications. A project is either deemed to have failed, as being contested, or as successful. So, for this, the purpose of this research. Chifu has a last scale land acquisition that has been project that has its ongoing, that there is no context that the project since the land was acquired has been uh, progressing uh, steadily. So that's how come we selected Chifu as representing the case for a successful land acquisition. Whilst in Lolito, though the project is ongoing, the literature review so far revealed that there is a, a protest from the inhabitants about the the project. So Lolito represents the contested case of land acquisition, and Yendi represents the failed uh, classification in the sense that though the land has been acquired, the project has begun um, for various reasons, including protests by the inhabitants, the project has been abandoned. So these three different locations will give us data that will enable us to understand how farmers have coped or are coping with the phenomenon of land graphs. So for our methodology, we're looking at the adopting a mixed methods approach. The mixed method approach says us to uh, that will enable me to combine um, both qualitative and quantitative methods of data collection. So for this research, I will administer a questionnaire. Uh, so I'm estimating to administer 300 uh, questionnaires in the community uh, to farmers. So that's why the sampling method that will be purposely sample because yeah, the target group for this research is farmers. So we'll be targeting farmers who will be able to give us information that will help me to achieve the first and second objectives of this research, which is to um, first document the impact of this project, secondly to understand how they are coping with the phenomenon. Then we'll also conduct interviews. I'm looking at conducting 20 interviews from the local to the national level institutions. And the town, the local authorities include chiefs, uh, local government representatives to the national level where policy is made and implemented at the ministries, the various ministries. Then we'll complement the information from the questionnaires with uh, focus group discussions. In total, I'm looking at having six focus group discussions uh, where members will be selected through the questionnaire administration, during the questionnaire administration, and then through snowball, a process of snowball something and te techniques. So COVID-19 and data collection. This, I had to put in this just because um, just like any other activity, this research has also been impacted by the outbreak of COVID. So the initial plan, as I'll illustrate in the next slide, was to 
use the summer as a period of data collection for this study. However, that has been put on hold. So alternatively, I've submitted and I'm waiting clearance for the text application. Then I'm working on the chapter one and then the literature review, which will constitute the chapter two of this research. So I'm hoping to use this summer, which was initially scheduled to be used for data collection to achieve uh, targets of chapter one and then the chapter two. And then once the ethics clearance is given, hopefully in the coming weeks, I'll be able to establish contact with target groups to start the process of data collection through interviews. And I'll be making use of uh, communication channels such as uh, phone call, video calls, and video group video calls in order to achieve the initial data collection tool of conducting interviews with identifiable groups whilst I await um, the easing of restrictions in order to be able to do the other data collection methods. So as I said, the timelines initially was to start in January and end in April 2021. So far, um, the proposal has been approved by my department and the, the, the committee. It has been approved. And then I'm hoping to, in the coming weeks, actually get a clearance from the ethics, which will kickstart the process of data collection that I'll begin with the um, interviews due to the impact of COVID-19 that I could not travel to the study locations for data collection. So hopefully with um, what has been the restrictions being eased and all that, I will be able to, in April 2021, have um, some results of this study, which will help us to understand how uh, farmers in three different agrarian communities in Ghana are experiencing and coping with the phenomenon of land grabs. Thank you very much. I will end here and then I will. I am open for suggestions on how to improve upon this project and achieve the set targets for the project. Thank you.